For a mission that started out with a goal to extinguish the light, ended up allowing the newest member of the Dark Matter Empire, Zayet, to find a new one that illuminated her spirits. Hello everyone and welcome to Dueling with Dance. and today we're talking all things episode 107 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush anime series. An episode that introduces us to Zayet, who is in my opinion the best Dark Matter Empire member that we've been given so far. Yes, I know we've only been introduced to three of them, but out of those three, she's the most normal one of them, and it's kind of great that the episode actually made me want to cheer for her in order to win. But that wasn't the case, and her winning here wouldn't have made much sense anyways, as Julius is still fighting for something much bigger. He's fighting for clues to where Yumu is, as well as the revival of the Bulgarians. So for him losing would have ultimately done more harm than good, so I'm kind of glad of the result of the duel itself, but... Now, I'll return to Yudius in a minute, as I want to start off by talking about Zayat. And her design, I think, is incredible, but her quirk of being extremely anxious, kind of sweet and humanising for the character. As we've all at one stage in our life felt anxious, and we all process slash deal with these feelings differently. So her taking on this soldier slash cheerleader like persona, saluting and raising her voice, was just her way of releasing this overload of anxiety that she was feeling. Now I actually liked her voice acting, and the decision to up the volume I thought was good. Now I can see how people might find this part of the character annoying, but staying with her personality, you can tell that she was inspired by Udius's words, thanks to her stepping up and trying within this duel. But also, after the duel, she showed signs of respect and admitted to having fun. I definitely want to see more of her within the show, especially if we get to see her character develop, because I can definitely say that it'll be fun to see her gain more and more confidence as she appears more and more on screen. So I like it if she is definitely a big returning character. As for her dueling skills, when compared to the other three, I would say she's really good. The combination that she used with her fusion monster was super high offensive power, and maybe even has some good OTK potential if going second, but you'll need to be very lucky with the draws. Now, most likely her combination will beat your opponent in the second or third turn, as we kind of almost saw within this episode. Now I'm going to be the first one to admit that I thought at first seeing all of these characters using the same fusion monster would get boring and stale fast. But actually I've been loving how this is an opportunity to see these characters utilising the same monster, but in so many different ways. Showcasing the monster's versatility. As for her other monster, I liked her kind of cheerleader designs for them as the slight boost gave even the Duelist a power boost. As we know, Zayet needs cheering and encouragement, so her monsters being cheerleaders kind of works to boost her own morale slash confidence while in the midst of a duel. Her ace monster, if you want to call it that, Dark Matter Freya, is a great design, so hopefully we get to see more of this monster in the future and possibly get a fusion for it moving forward. Now then, moving on to Udius. Seeing him cheering on his opponent was a typical Udius move, as he's just that kind. Even to his worst enemies, he would still help them. You can call this naivety, but his display of kindness showcases Udius as a person, as well as his passion for rush dueling. But I also really loved how this contrasts of the Dark Empire, in them using the galaxy typing, but with the dark attribute, against Udius, someone who also uses the galaxy type, but with the light attribute, kind of playing on this idea within this episode, as we had Zayet talking about extinguishing the light user. So maybe, although Zawijo did have, you know, dark attribute galaxy monsters, Maybe the Dark Matter Empire were the first ones to kind of create this archetype. Who knows? Or maybe whoever this Dark Meister is that we saw at the end of the episode, 
is feeding to the Dark Matter Empire that there is a Galaxy Light user that is the villain. And that's why they're kind of more drawn towards and told to go after the group. Who knows? Right then, getting on to the reveals. Learning how they only became known within the last month was crazy. Especially when you look at the fact that the last guy that we ran into said that he has 10 mothers. He made 10 women into his mother within one month. Get this guy on a list. Now. However, as a race, the Dark Matter Empire does seem rather advanced, as their knowledge is specific, but relevant. And I do kind of like this idea of them also, because they're newly founded, that they still have gaps within their knowledge. So they don't know things like toilets exist. So they're still learning, which means they can still grow, they can still develop, and they can still evolve. I kind of like that. But I do find it interesting how they always refer to the Dark Matter Empire being founded, not created, when referencing the existence of them. Where did they come from? And how come nobody knew about them before a month ago? Is it a paradox situation because of the whole time travel aspect that we've had within the last season? Now we do see glimpses of the Dark Meister, and this also is accompanied by a red scarfed cat. And as a wild guess, I would say it could be Yuamu. There's no evidence yet, but I do have a video up talking about how this could possibly be her with the little evidence that we do have. So if you wanted to check out that little theory video, if you will, go check it out. I'll link it at the end of this one. I like how we finally got the law behind why this cat planet's people were a peaceful race because of in the past, they did have conflict because someone brought these three games into um, the planet and it created this sense of winning and losing and people became greedy and obsessed and it created that conflict so they sealed them away and then kind of became the race that they're known as now. Until obviously the Lou came back, uh, came in. We also understand why they don't have out of planet communication. And this is also to kind of help with the idea of no conflict being entered into the planet. Because if they had communications with other planets, they could learn about other games and this could inspire other people to use those games on the planet thus history repeating itself. And I'm pretty sure that this device that we get introduced to at the end of this episode is going to reappear once again in the future, as we see Zayat kind of, although she doesn't have right to be in this room, she does kind of lurk in the background and listen in on what the device is, meaning that the information would be useful to the Dark Meister. Plus, the callback to Yuhi Tournament Prize was pretty neat, even though I don't really remember being told what it was at the time. But yeah, all of that revealed that we just got, got uh, all of the reveals that we got in this episode, I thought were decent, and it did help give us a few little tiny steps forward. Now, of course, I mentioned about the machine appearing again in the future, and speaking of things that appear again, well, three became four, as once more, Danamu increased. So it's kind of official information now that every time they beat a member of the Dark Matter Empire, Dynamo increases. But why? Honestly, I don't know. But I'm getting more and more curious about this as we go through each episode week by week. So hopefully we get a little bit more on this as we move forward and it becomes less of a joke because at the minute they're using it as a comedic skit and more as a, oh, well actually, that's pretty cool. Anyways, those are my thoughts on this episode. Let me know yours in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And of course, if you haven't checked out my other videos, make sure you go and do so. I'll be linking them in the description down below. But with all that being said, have a great day. Aligator, matane, goodbye.